the city council and mayor just passed a budget that if you are elected, you're going to have to work with. Can you give us your thoughts? Yeah, sure. Um, I have gone through the budget in considerable detail, and my first in impression is that uh, we were left, with, as you said, with a $2 million deficit spending, I believe is a close number. Um, looking at the fund balance, the general fund balance, um, and if you back out the required, the legally required reserve that we have to have, mm -hmm. um, that leaves us with a $25,000 fund balance uh, next year. I, I think that in itself is irresponsible to leave somebody else with that type of situation because we cannot next year deficit spend by law. Right. So what we have is what we have. Um, that doesn't mean that we can't, as the current council, make changes to the budget or to the situation. There's several things that jumped out at me in, in reviewing the budget. One of them is, well, there's several. The one is the economic development. We spend about $225,000 a year in economic development. Um, okay. I need to see, I would like to see, a cost-benefit analysis. I think there's $89,000 was advertising the rest of salaries. Are we getting anything out of that? Can I, I mean, directly related to that department. Okay. Not suggesting it's, we're not. I just don't know right. if we are. Okay. Um, and I never have heard a discussion in that direction. Uh, the landfills contract is $700,000 a year. We have to have it. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But these are hard economic times. We haven't seen a decrease. Perhaps we need to take it out to bid. Perhaps we need to ask for some concessions. Um, nobody can be immune from this economy, and that includes everybody. Um, another $700,000 in vehicle maintenance. How many cars do we have, and how much does it take to, to maintain them? 700000 is a lot of money. I mean, there's so um, contracting services, um, lobbyists, $137,000. Cost benefit? Are we getting anything for that money directly? We have to. We have to know that. Right. Um, legal and uh, litigation is one hundred and fifty thousand in the budget. Um, maybe that's somewhere where we are making bad decisions that are causing legal fees, outside legal fees. Okay. Um, I, I see a lot. Uh, janitorial services, sixty thousand um, dollars. He could hire one full-time person with benefits to keep City Hall clean and the rec center clean five days a week, eight hours a day, for a lot less than $60,000, okay. um, I believe. I mean, those are small things. Right. But you have to look at the small things first and then get to the big things. Now, these are non-payroll related items I have here. Mm -hmm. And that's um, important to note that that's where you start, but it's not going to end there, and sadly. Uh, to get $2 million out of this budget, uh, you know, and I've heard people say, well, let's just cut it out of City Hall. Well, $3 million of that is City Hall. That's everybody. That's city manager. That's legal. That's capital projects. That's planning. That's everybody. $3 million. You're not going to solve a $2 million budget problem by cutting everybody in City Hall. I mean, it's not practical. So you have to go to every department and look. Um, we, we are in a senior community here. Fire and safety is incredibly important to seniors, myself being one. Um, I want the paddles on my chest in five minutes, not ten, <laughs> when I go down. <laughs> so, um, you know, Hopefully this that is, won't happen. Exactly. But, you know, it, it's, it's incredibly important to everybody in this town. But having said that, fire and safety cannot be immune by virtue of the fact they're fire and safety. Everybody in this town is taking a hit. Every single person, whether it's in property taxes or property uh, values, whether it's you know myself in in my pay situation, um, everybody I talk to has taken a hit. Small businesses, everybody. So to have a protected class, so to speak, is not fair either. However, they are very important to me. Um, so I, it would be disingenuous for me to say that that there is sacred cows in the city and that we have to 
let somebody else go at the expense of somebody else, or we have to yeah. ignore one department at the expense of another. It has to be fair. It has to be equitable. The bottom line is we have to look at every alternative first. Okay. Well, thank you. That's a lot of detail right there. Um, the city manager was released from his position last week. Councilman Smith mentioned in a follow-up email interview that he favored hiring a mayor's assistant rather than a city manager. Other people say that too much of the council and mayor authority and responsibilities were transferred to a non-elected official in the, city, in the city manager's position. Can you give us some of your thoughts on this subject? Yeah, and I've, I've heard the, the discussion also again about a charter, uh, you know, a different form of government. Um, mm -hmm. and, and frankly, I'm open to any form of government as long as it's legal. It doesn't vest too much power in one person, and there's checks and balances. Those are the three major criteria for me. Um, having said that, um, since we are a council manager form of government now, and to change that would take legislative process, and mm -hmm. we're done for this one, so that's two years away, we will have some form of similar government to what we've had. I believe that the current council, irrespective of, of the performance of the former city manager, mm -hmm. The current council failed to give clear and honest direction, clear, failed to follow up, failed to reprimand when it wasn't following directions. And so at the, at the end of the day, I attribute the failure of this system that we have today to the city, city council. And I think the citizens have directed their um, opinion in that regard, too. Uh, so I, I know that with a stronger council, with people who are willing to make tough decisions, give very clear guidance, and hold accountable that person, mm -hmm. I, I believe that the system will work. Okay. And, uh, okay. That's it. It's apparent that the incoming mayor and council will be selecting a new permanent police chief to replace Chief Law since Lieutenant Tanner is serving as the interim chief. Should you be one of the newly elected council, what standards would you use to help select the new chief of police? Oh, the standards. Um, well, clearly you have to look at the qualifications, what they've, what they've, where they've worked in the past. And, and this could include Mr. Tanner, if, if he so desires. Mm -hmm. um, it would obviously take a review of the performance as interim chief and compare Mr. Tanner's qualifications to other qualified candidates. And it's uh, clearly somebody that is um, involved in the community or has been involved in the community in, the, in the, their past service. Somebody that is uh, educated and trained, obviously, and meets the, the I guess, the uh, criteria that we have set in the past, in uh -huh. exceeds. Uh, 